uh, defining the perpetrators. Uh, and this is, it is a, it's a sort of a trouble for us. Uh, I mean, the United Nations, the, the institution that actually broke the international agreement, it's called the Protocol Against Human Trafficking. Because if you look at the issue in itself, while we have neat categories uh, say, uh, stated in the protocol and related international agreements, stated in national legislation, you have victims of human trafficking or the crime of human trafficking, you have the crime of smuggling of migrants, and you have other forms of crime. Uh, but in reality, life is much more complicated than that. There's a tremendous amount of, sort of gray areas whereby it is very difficult, and this is one of the complexities in terms of uh, the administration of, of law, uh, the, the difficulty of defining whether in the case of trafficking or is a case of, 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 of exploitation or is a case of illegal, irregular migration and so forth. I, they, no, from the legal vantage point, we need classification, but again, the reality is much more complicated. What actually happens in the in the, each story of victims you may talk to, leaving aside the clear-cut cases of exploitation and forms of slavery, the individual may get into a situation, perhaps migrating irregularly across the Mexican border from in Europe, from Eastern, in Western Europe, from Eastern Europe, and so forth. The fellow does not speak the language, the fellow has no money, the fellow has no skill, becomes very rapidly sort of um, victims is preyed upon by organized crime and then becomes indeed a case of organized crime, uh, trafficking of human beings. Then the fellow may suffer, the victim may suffer a number of years and then he may run away or he or she may, may be released because the age is beyond exploitation and so on forth and becomes an irregular migrant. He's there without paper, without this, without that. And so in, in, the, in the history of individual situation, we see that the importance of categories that allow judges and prosecutors to do their work, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, we see that uh, it is very easy for lawyers to, uh, be, to um, uh, uh, hamper the process of justice and therefore count on the intrinsic uh, gray area where unfortunately this gets entangled, to, in, entangled with with other forms of crime, and I said, mm -hmm. irregular migration, or it could be uh, prostitution, could be illicit prostitution, but see voluntary, and so forth. The protocol, which was decided in the year 2000, identified three key areas, three key characteristics for this crime. First, the victim has to be extracted from its own environment, may not be the house, or maybe somewhere else, but has to be forced out. It has to be a victim of violence, and third, it has to be exploited. So there should be, in, if to complete the crime, a revenue factor which is accruing to, so to a third party, to perpetrator. Again, to prove all three of these, the coexistence of the three elements becomes very difficult, and as a consequence, the complexity of the definition and the complexity of the administration of justice in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to let you know, we probably only have time for about one more question, and then uh, Secretary Costa might will have some closing remarks as well. Uh, yes, question. Um, I just want to sort of echo some of the concerns that the public has mentioned uh, in relationship to the idea of humanizing victims of human trafficking. Um, it seems to me like um, this sort of stereotypical notion of our collective understanding of our, what a victim should look like has incredible implications for policy. For instance, um, uh, victims, uh, one of the civil remedies for victims is, uh, for immigrant victims, is the, uh, they receive uh, a visa or some sort of remedy related to their immigration status. Uh, only 5,000 of those are given, and yet about 2% of, of those visas are actually granted to victims. And I think that the reason is because we're all victims of the same overly generalized, inhumane version of what a victim should look like. So the policy itself alienates the majority of persons who have actually experienced human trafficking. Um, and I'm wondering um, if the panel would give any sort of um, if, they ha if you had the opportunity to inform policy in a way that grants uh, victims the three-dimensionality of their existence, what would you suggest the visa program should look like for these victims? It's to me as if what you're asking the journalists to do is to be policymakers, which may, which they not feel comfortable doing. Does any one of you uh, want to be a policymaker, or should we throw this back to the policy people? I was, I put your mic on, Mike. Okay. I was just, uh, if, if you had the opportunity to inform in a hypothetical way. 
I am, I, I'm happy to take that. In, b before I became a filmmaker, I was an attorney and investment banker, and I quit the law to make movies, and I'm, my Jewish mother is still think that I'm dead, but, um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll use law in, in that respect. Um, I, I, think, I, I think that uh, with this issue, because of the complexities, because it does involve victims from everywhere in a variety of ways, it absolutely should be much simplified and, 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 and make, make it much easier for people to receive this visa. Um, I think conditioning these kind of visas on certain cooperation or certain actions or certain conditions actually probably encourage uh, victims from um, cooperating at times. Um, and and, I, and in, I guess, you know, it's those cert certain times you say, let's err uh, to, to a particular direction. I think that um, if we grant a few extra visas for people that may have not been victimized as badly or at all or so on, let, be, let that be the case and let's not make it so hard, difficult uh, and, and time and effort and money consuming, visual consuming to actually even apply. So the, the problem is not even the how many visas because I think uh, they, they, while they say there was only 5,000 available, what they actually grant, I think, each year is a couple of hundreds. So, so it's not that they're saying, oh, you know, there are so many people who are trying to get it and don't. The problem is that the requirements what, to get it and how difficult it is, especially for victims that already are afraid, that have many times no, <laughs> not enough education or risk to even apply. So, so I, I think that that's a, it's really a matter of really looking at it as a policy in a kind of fresh eyes and saying, you know, I, I don't understand why we even, you know, I, I'll, I'll go back, to, and I'm sorry, if I'm Israeli, so I, I mean, assume that I don't use this word easily, kind of the Holocaust, right? You're saying, so those people you're not, that are being killed here, you're not letting them get, you know, into another place that they will be safe, and you're sending them back, it, it's kind of, it, it seems to have a similar kind of frame of mind that we are not sensitive enough to who the victims are, what they're going through, what are the resources and abilities to do, and we're focusing on procedural and administrative things that make no sense. If, if that's, so I think like victims in that respect should be, uh, receive this visa much easier, much quicker, with much more protection. Somebody earlier mentioned the witness protection product. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we really need to, to, to realize who victims are and be extremely sensitive, not only us as media, but us as you know, public, us as government, to how do we now, those survivors, how do we treat them? How do we not make it even worse for them? I, I don't it, it, it's dangerous territory, I think, when you start mixing journalism and policy. But, but, but I think, but, it's a, but it was a good question. And let me just turn to Ben, and then we're going to okay. move on. I, um, I spend my, m much of my looking to human traffickers, so I'm not afraid of dangerous territory. Um, and I'll, I'll weigh in on the policy question. I think it's, um, uh, in, in, for example, in this country, on the T visa issue, the reason for the low uh, number of identifications is uh, it's largely a training issue. It's a response issue. And it's, and it's um, police not being uh, trained how to identify victims when they come up against somebody who is undocumented. Uh, if, they, if they're, if they're um, dealing with an undocumented worker in, a, in uh, for example, the Postville, Iowa, is a, is a classic example of um, a DOL, an ongoing DOL investigation being stepped on by an ICE raid. Um, and that kind of thing leads to low victim identification. Um, there's another overarching issue here, which is funding, appropriations. Um, and there are, the amount of money that the United States currently spends on an annual basis to fight the traffic in human beings is as much as they spend in one day to fight the traffic in illegs. And that's not to minimize the relative horrors of smoking pot. But it is to say, which is the more monstrous crime? Is it a 15-year-old selling pot on the street corner, or is it a 15-year-old being sold for rape and destruction on a street corner? And I think as, as long as those questions are not being asked of our government, then you're going to get the kind of um, piecemeal and, I think, vastly insufficient response on human trafficking. <laughs>